Hey, this is Latif Mikado, and you're listening to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, where I take some time each night to try and reflect on the freestyle scene, where it is, where it's going, and try to figure out how to sustain it, not just for future generations to enjoy, but also to benefit. So sit back, relax, and let's talk some freestyle. Hey, what's up, everyone? It's Latif, and welcome to the Good Night Freestyle Podcast, and this is episode 38. It is uh, Friday night, um, quiet night. Uh, day was pretty busy. Um, got quite a bit done today. Hoping you guys had a great Friday. I don't know if any of you, most of you are probably home. Uh, those who are out, uh, wishing you a nice, safe an enjoyable evening. Uh, those who are staying home, hey. <laughs> so, anyway, um, yeah, this is my last weekend off for maybe a month, two months, maybe. Um, after that, I'm back on the road. So, I'm looking forward to it. Looking forward. I got mixed feelings, you know. I once I get the ball rolling, then I'm good. Um, but. Uh, I'm kind of I'm kind of ready to go out there. I'll tell you one thing. Also, I want to see how I um, how it works out with the podcast. I want to be able to go uh, do the show. I'm trying to think. You know, by the time uh, I don't know if I'm going to do it later. If I'm going to do it before I leave to the show, um, it's gonna be it's gonna be cool. It's gonna be cool. I'm thinking maybe maybe after the show. That might be that might make the me- the most sense because then I have a little something to talk about think you guys might enjoy that you know so but um anyway we're locked in a couple of the shows uh today so just so you guys know so as you guys know this weekend uh february 15th we'll be in fresno california uh with the cover girls and a few other acts stevie b lisa lisa it's gonna be pretty cool uh the following week we'll be at the arena um theater in houston texas and then the following day we'll be at a place called Cocktails, um, which is in Austin, Texas, and that's just with the cover girls. Uh, the Houston show will also be with Stevie B, Lisa Lisa, and I believe Jocelyn Enriquez. Uh, I don't have the flies in front of me. I'm going straight off memory, so if I'm wrong, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, uh, then we picked up, let me see, then we picked up, that's for that weekend. Then we, uh, February, March, April, uh, we just picked up. These are the ones. We have some other ones that are in between these, but I can't mention those because those aren't locked in. So the next one that we just picked up is uh, April 3rd, which will be in Massachusetts, and that's going to be Angel OCG, Angel by herself, solo with Lil Susie. So that should be cool. Uh, It's going to be a place called, I believe it's called Aquarius. Uh, You guys can look into that. All right, so this is April 3rd, 2020. Lil Susie and Angel CG. So when you get a chance, uh, check that out. And then the big show that we've been looking forward to and we were hoping that uh, would lock in quickly, and it did, is uh, Pride San Antonio in San Antonio, Texas. And this will be the weekend of the 25th, 26th, 27th, I believe. Um, And this will be uh, uh, Pride. So we have Angel coming in uh, the 25th. I'm trying to think. Yeah, we're getting in the 25th. 26th, we're doing a kickoff party, and she's also doing an interview, um, one of the TV shows, uh, one of the TV stations out there. Um, And then the following day, of course, is the parade, early uh, soundtrack, uh, and then we have a show, and by then, uh, Caroline and Sunshine will be in. We go do the show, and then after the show, uh, we're going to jump inside one of the open-air vehicles, and we will be a part of the parade. So, so apparently for the parade, there's 180 uh, entries. We're number 50. So that should be fun. That should be really cool. I have never been in a pride parade before, but I will be in this one. So I'm looking forward to that. You know, it's kind of kind of uh, kind of cool. I, I gave you guys, I told you guys a story that uh, my first show... Um, 
with the cover girls bringing them back together in 2011 was for pride in long beach long beach pride and that was an incredible show, man. It, it was crazy. I, I love those parades, man. Believe it or not, man, you know, it, they're really, really, you know, I mean, you know, I've always been for the underdog, man. And I've seen, you know, I, I watch people just, um, you know, just kind of climb the ranks, man, just kind of get themselves uh you know, lifting themselves up and getting, you know, this is everything, man. Well, regardless of, I'm not even talking about, you know, sexual orientation, but regular race and religion and, you know, the uh, sex and, you know, it's just, it's crazy. Um, you know, I was talking to somebody the other day because they were talking about like the protests um, that was happening, you know, with people kneeling at the football games and people talk about these different protests. And you know what? I have no problem with protests of any kind. I really don't. Good or bad, and I'll tell you why. Because I think it's what makes this country what it is. I really do. Of course, I'm not going to participate in anything I disagree with. But I understand, you know, sometimes you have two sides and what we, a side that we think is bad might not be bad for the other side. In their mind, it's the right thing to do. In their mind, you know, of course we got the evils, can't get away, but the evils come, come everywhere and they come from all walks of life and they come from all religions and all sexes and the whole works, you know, so evil is evil and they come disguised in, in everyone, you know, but for two sides to oppose each other and then for the world to finally choose a side and say, you know what, we're going to go with this one. And then at that moment, you see the entire world shift, rules shift, laws shift, attitudes shift, still a lot of hate, a lot of hate, a lot of um, bitterness, a lot of sore losers. But after a while, we get used to it. After a while, it becomes part of what we are and who we are. And as an American, I can appreciate that. I really can. Um, so I'm not against protests. Uh, I'm not against, you know, I, I have a daughter, a daughter in the Army. Um, however, when they would protest against war, they would protest against soldiers. I, I can't. I personally can't be mad. Um, same thing with racists, you know? I mean, racist is right. I'm, I'm Puerto Rican. I've had my share. But you got to understand, you got to go a little deeper and understand that these people, most of them, not all of them, some of them are evil, but most of them feel like it's for the best of for everyone. It's for the good of everyone. I'm not talking about those who are burning down homes and killing people. That's the evil I'm talking about. But I'm talking about the mentality of those who are not evil people, are not mean-hearted people. They're just ignorant. They're just ignorant. They'll probably, and and also they, I believe that they're loyal to their own, like their own families. You understand what I'm saying? So. You have people who I know who have would refuse to marry outside their race simply f for the fact that their parents were strong, strongly felt strongly against it as well. Not that they still feel that way. They might convince themselves, but they live in a different world. But because of their parents or their grandparents, that they wouldn't want to, you know, it's almost like uh, dishonoring them, you know? So, <clears throat> uh, but I, I, I have to be, have empathy for everyone. I have to look at the big picture. I don't need to share my views with anyone because some people won't even take what I'm saying the right way. They'll take it out of context. They'll take, I'm not talking about the actual subject matter, but just the idea around it. Why do people protest? People protest religions. 
people protest the war. People protest when it comes to race, when it comes to sex. Um, people just protest. They protest against rated R, rated X, um, explicit lyrics. Um, what else? <laughs> what else? Transgender. Um, people protest against who's going to be the president. <laughs> You know, they're going to protest. What else do people protest? Um, segregation, which I guess is a part of um, racism. Uh, but some will say no. See, in their mind, seg- segregation isn't racism. It's a way of everyone living peaceful. This is in their mind. This is the way they look at it. And maybe at that time, they were right. Because when they integrated, especially these schools, there was a lot of problems. But what happened was, in time, people adapt. People learn to live with it. Until it gets to a point where it's the norm. It's expected. Um, This was the same thing with females in the military. With gay people in the military. Uh, my daughter Erica went to the Citadel. So if you're not familiar with the Citadel, I'll look it up. Um, it's basically the West, the West Point of the South. And let me tell you something. It has, as me, as a male, as a Puerto Rican male, my daughter is half Puerto Rican, half black. And she's a female. This school would never have even looked in her direction. They would not have looked in her direction because she was black or that she was Spanish, Puerto Rican, or that she was a female. So she had three strikes when she walked through the door. But that changed many years ago. Well, not really that many. Actually, in in my lifetime, it changed. Um, And if you guys want to see a crazy story about that, about that school, I think they changed the name or I think that used to be the name back in the days. Uh, check out, it's called Lords of, Lords of Discipline and check out that movie. So when my daughter went to the school, I sat down and watched the movie and I don't know if that was a smart thing to do because <laughs> it did not make me feel good at all. But I went to the school, I went to the library. The library had this huge framed painting, beautiful painting, like Oh my God. And what the painting was, was the North and the South during war. So you had uh, the Yankees and and what they call the Confederates. Ah, I forgot, man. I'm kind of losing my my history thing. But anyway, so the blue coats and the gray coats and they're on horse and they're fighting and they're shooting each other. And guess who they showed on the floor? Guess who they showed who was dead on the floor? Yeah, the Yankees, okay? Now, this is in South Carolina. So they still have this huge, huge mural on the wall. Then you go other parts of the... They have a museum in there. So the library is like a slash museum. So you can read up or you can look at some of the things. And, you know, uh, I hate to judge a book, man, but... They, saw, they showed a lot of the people that ran the school back in the days. And you could just look in their eyes and you could tell a whole story. You can hear their voice. You can tell that they weren't having most of us, you know. And um, But it's still American history. It's still American history. Some of it I'm not proud of, but it's American history nonetheless. Um, but, you know, people protest against that school and even for women to come in. There was one girl, if you ever get a chance, read the story. I knew the story a little bit better when Erica was in the school because I kind of read it a few times. I was talking about it quite a bit, but I believe it was like, uh, man, I could be wrong, but I think it was like 1995. And this girl would become the first female to join the Citadel. It was a white girl. Right? I believe so. Yeah, it was a white girl. And let me tell you something. They gave her hell. They really did. 
they gave her hell, but guess what? She finally got in. And uh, supposedly, now I could have this story all screwed up, but so I do advise anybody who might be interested, uh, Google this information and just type in the Citadel, type in, I don't know, first female to enter the Citadel, and they even have videos, just check out the story. And I believe, from what I remember, it took her like two years just to get in. So she went through the whole, you know, I don't think she went in on a scholarship. Uh, um, I think later on someone stepped up and paid her bill. I, I believe it was um, an actor. I think it was an actor, a famous or some famous person that went to that school that actually ended up paying her school bill. But anyway, she took like two years to try to get in, but apparently she didn't last um, maybe a couple months, maybe maybe less. Um, it was that bad. It was really that bad for her. Um, and when you, I think about it now, I have a daughter, and you know, my daughter probably wouldn't even have made it that far because of who she is or what she is. <clears throat> but um, this woman wind up. She ended up finally quitting the school, and I don't know what she did. And pe then people were upset about that. Oh, you went through all of this, and then you quit? Well, like, you know, she. but she broke that barrier, and she opened up those gates for other women to come in, and other women of color, and men of color. And right now, it's a pretty diversified school. It's a beautiful school. Like, you walk through there, and it's like, wow. But, but, it's a rough school. It's a rough school. So Erica went for a while. Uh, she ended up leaving. Well, what it was was her first choice was going to the Army. She's always a, a, been an A-plus student, but she had it down pat. She's like, she loved the military because she was the RTC. She was highly decorated RT, uh, RTC in high school. She was going to go to the school here. But then she decided to go into the army. She was going to first go into the air force, then. But she didn't like this, what they were the, the jobs that they had. She wanted to do something medical, so the army had the best jobs for medical. So she's a nurse. I think she's yeah, she's a tech nurse, or um, she sets up operating rooms. But she works on patients too. So she told me some of the crazy stuff she does. But anyway, um, so she wants to go to the army, and she enlisted in the army. We even went, and she swore in the whole works. In the process, like in between her swearing in and shipping out, I got a call from the Citadel. Now she had applied for the Citadel a while ago. So somebody calls, I pick up the phone and they ask, I tell them and they, they, they explain, how you doing? You know, Erica Mercado, please. Da, da, da. I said, how you doing? She's not here right now. Who's calling? Well, this is the Citadel. We, I said, is there anything I can help you with? They said, well, yeah, she was offered a scholarship. I'm like, really? They say, yes, full scholarship. Um, we would we'll like to talk to her. I'm like, well, she already enlisted in the Army. She swore it. Excuse me, guys. I'm a little, little tired, real late right now. Um, and um, I said, she already sworn. She's enlisted. And they said, well, this is an Army scholarship, so um, we can work it out. We can defer her enlistment so when she comes out because what happens in the Citadel once you get out of the Citadel you have to enlist in the army that's how it works it's crazy man like they hold on to you for a minute and I said to her I said well I said I'll have a call you but I, I didn't think at that point that she was gonna go to me <clears throat> she she seemed like she was already convinced she was already her mind was set to go to the army and that was it now Angel thought that she would. And we remember us talking when I told Angel, she goes, wow, she might want to go. It's a scholarship to the Citadel. And I said, really? I said, I don't know, man. I would think so, but I don't know. Something tells me because she's in the Army, she listened, that she's going to move forward with that. So anyway, at first, when we first told her, she said, she's going to stick with the Army. And I looked at Angel and I smiled. I was like, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> But then she woke up one day and had a total change of plans. You know what? I'm going to give the Citadel a shot. I can always go into the Army later. Makes sense. Okay? Not always the other way around, but that way she had 
both choices. So she went. We ended up taking her. I remember when we dropped her off from school, you know. It was such a weird feeling for me because we dropped her off from school and then we jumped on a ship on a carnival cruise. Because it was like right up the block and we took a cruise. We had planned a cruise to leave the day that she started school. So it was crazy. So after we dropped her off, we went to eat and then we went and jumped on the ship. And all I'm thinking, and we're gone for like five days, and all I'm thinking is, man, I just dropped my daughter off at this strange school in the South. And now I'm on the ship. God forbid something happens. I told my nephew, Eddie, I said, hey, man, I left your number. I need you. You know what I'm saying? And um, so when we got out, apparently everything was cool. Um, but then what happened was she hurt herself. And it wasn't that she hurt herself. Um, it was the people that she, they were training, that they had trained. They basically had other students that were training her. And they had a lot of running on concrete. And, you know, if you're not accustomed to running, like, she ran certain things, but she wasn't really a runner. And if you're not a runner, you don't know how to run, and they got you running on cement, you're going to create problems. And she started getting, like, shin splints, and then they put her on some sort of medication that messed up her stomach. It got real bad. It got to a point where she ended up in the hospital, and um, the next thing you know, when she came home, um, she had a sponsor that was with, with her, nice guy, I forgot his name, but... Um, he hung out with her and um, he guided her through. And then she finally got to the conclusion where she was like, you know what? I don't think this is for me. And she asked me about it. And I don't take that as quitting because she gave it a shot. Some things, you know, give a shot. Don't quit because it was hard. Quit because you figure out, eh, not for me. Happens a lot. A lot of people go to college, don't go to college, and wind up quitting school and become these multimillionaires are running businesses. I mean, it happens a lot. So anyway, um, she ended up leaving the school. They put her through a whole evaluation. They do a psych thing and they have a psychiatrist talk to her and make sure that somebody didn't screw her up. But nah, she just, she wanted to pursue her, her original plan, which was go to the army. So she came back. She was here for a while and then she had to go back and re-swear in and the whole works and then she ended up shipping out and then she went to basic she actually turned 18 years old in basic training in oklahoma we went down there for her graduation it was freezing as hell man and then from there they shipped her to uh they shipped her out to uh to houston uh to no to san antonio texas which is sam houston and then they brought her back down to north carolina she stayed at uh fort bragg she was there for a while and then from Bragg, they shipped her to Germany where she's at right now. So, but anyway, <laughs> so how did I get into that story? I don't, I don't remember, but anyway, I just thought it was a cool story. Uh, you guys get to know a little bit of what's going on. So she's in Germany right now. She she works in a hospital, one of the top hospitals in the country. And um, she sees a lot of action in there. I mean, she's done, she told me, I think the first week she was there, she helped deliver three babies. How crazy is that? She's done circumcisions on grown men. Well, a cyst, you know. She's not a doctor. She's uh, she's opened up, you know, help open up people and take out their insides and hold up their insides while the doctors go in and do whatever repairs that they gotta do. And oh God, some of the stuff that she tells me. Uh, but it doesn't phase her. It doesn't phase her. She said in the beginning she was a little like queasy. She says, but now like it's nothing, you know. I couldn't do that, <laughs> you know. I see these doctors, they come in, they'll, they'll eat a sandwich and they'll, you know, put the sandwich on the body and <laughs> pick it up, eat, you know. I can't, I can't even eat, I can't even be in the same room. I'm going to think that the molecules are floating around in the end, getting all over my sandwich, so. But anyway, all right, guys, that's it for tonight. I uh, hope you enjoyed that little story. I did, it was kind of cool. It was kind of cool reminiscing on that. It was a really good experience. Great milestone, in my opinion. And she was a part of a very, very historic, you know, a part of freaking American history. You know, guys, check out the Citadel. Do you know it was a school, a, a school in arms, which means the students used to have guns. And what it was, it was, an, it was a soldier school at one point where... They sent soldiers there for training and for everything else. Um, and apparently a lot of students from there were a part of the Civil War as well as the Mexican-American War. 
How crazy is that? From that school. So that school dates, dates back to, you know, the 18, early 1800s, I believe. 1842, maybe? I don't remember. I knew all that stuff because I was, I was like, I was geeking out on it when I was, when she was in it. Now, when she left, I was like, I ungeeked myself. I took myself off the notifications of the emails that used to come in. So, but anyway, listen, guys, enjoy your night. Please be safe. Um, if you're chilling out, watching some movies, enjoy. Enjoy. There's nothing wrong with staying home with your loved ones all by yourself and just kicking back and enjoying your life. You know, enjoying life doesn't mean you have to do what they're doing on TV and be out in the clubs or acting a fool. No, man. Enjoying life meaning you're doing something and you're smiling. So until tomorrow, be safe, be cool, and good night, freestyle. Down to sleep, I pray to hear a freestyle beat. For if I die before I wake, I hope to make it to the break.